Welcome to Successful Dropout. This community is for the outliers, the innovators, the rebels, those who dare to defy the status quo, step off the conveyor belt, and claim the best version of their life. I'm your host, Kylan Ginger. Welcome to the movement that is Successful Dropout. Gotcha with the old intro. Old new intro? The old new intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new old intro. That was the intro that Sky and I, Sky's my brother, made for season two of Successful Dropout. And then we launched it and like none of you guys liked it. And so, but I love it. So, and it's my podcast. <laughs> they said it wasn't punchy enough. People so are like, it's I'm, not punchy enough. I'm playing it, damn morning. it. <laughs> it doesn't get me pumped. I mean, granted, if you do want to get pumped, like the old intro is it definitely gets is definitely up. there. But I was actually really surprised when we did that new th- this new intro that you guys just heard, how many people sort of came out of the woodwork that don't normally speak up in the community and they're just like, Hey, can you change it back? <laughs> I was like, hey, hey Kylie. It's nice to hear from you again, too. <laughs> so I changed it back. I'm but still listening, but I don't like it now. Dang it, I like this intro, so I was going to put it on just this episode. But Anyways, how are you doing? Me? Yes. I'm doing well, sorry. I had to open up my water bottle. I'm doing well. Yeah? Yeah. Busy week? Coming up? Um, yeah. Go away. Oh. Go out. Go out. (laughs) So Um, dejected. I know. Can you just shut the door? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, a busy week coming up. We've got a full day in town tomorrow. Um, actually, it's not terribly busy. Sorry. We've got a full day in town tomorrow. <laughs> you got to speak up next to the mic. So I know. Me. I know. Um, not terribly busy. And then this weekend we'll be in Yakima pretty much the whole weekend. We've got some uh, like long trainings going on with the juice bar. We're launching a bunch of new products. And so the whole team's coming together. And we have like, f- I think it's like four hours set aside <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, it's going to be good times. Um, and you're recording. Yeah, so for people listening who've been listening for a while, you know that I have I am in a band. The band never died. <laughs> Nothing ever right. happened to the band. We're still a band. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, the band was called, well, Village for a was long time. Was called? Because <laughs> we, we right, right, were right. called okay. Village. Yes, you and were. And now Entice the Mice for the last uh, several years. Anyways, it's just it's like my business partner and I and his uh, brother, and we, we've had the opportunity to tour all over the U.S. and record at all these different, um, you know, really neat studios. The last album we did was at Jack Johnson Studio down in L.A., and we just have a lot of fun with it. But we're all entrepreneurs, and so as we just got busier and busier, the bands yeah, there's just less and less time for the band, mm-hmm. um, but. A couple times a year, we still get together and we play live shows and we have a blast. Uh, If you go to my Instagram, just at Kylan Ginger, you can see some videos of of those shows if you scroll down far enough and have a lot of fun and we still record sometimes. So we're putting up some money and uh, getting my brother in with his studio equipment and going to record a small EP over this next weekend for like four or five days. It's going to be fun. Just sort of knock it out, yeah. For, they're really for they're really good. Like, you guys Thank are you. really good. I appreciate that. I will give you that. But if any of you have ever watched Parks and Rec, <laughs> 
It kind of reminds me. Are you comparing me, me to Andy Dwight? No, no, no. It kind of reminds <laughs> me of that, though, in regards to how many times your guys' name has changed. It's only Remember changed twice. It, no, because it was like the Village Musicians, and then just went down to Village, and okay. then you thought about going oh, back yeah. to Village Musicians, and then it was Entice the Mice, and now it's like ETM. <laughs> <laughs> and it just reminds you because, like, on the show, if you know what I'm talking about, it's like Mouse Rat and then Rat Mouse. And then what was the episode the other day where he was like, Fleetwood Mac Sex Pants, new band name? <laughs> new band name, I call it. <laughs> Wait, just Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> That's way cooler. If you don't watch Parks and Rec, then you're not cool. Yeah. <laughs> pretty great <laughs> that in the office is what we binge watch it's our go-to's anyways so all of that aside yes recording this week and a bunch of other stuff i was just in Valle bravo mexico uh a week ago yeah for five six days um with the team working on stuff there and we just got a whole to-do list and a really exciting roadmap and so i've been busy with that um and for those of you who don't know, that venture, so you've heard me talk about Pure Motion and some of these other projects I have going on. Th- all these projects are under this umbrella of individuals that I've been privileged enough to work with. Um, a couple of them I consider my, my mentors, really. Uh, one is Hayden Miyamoto and the other is Devin Sony. Hayden actually was the, he's uh, episode two. He was the first person I interviewed, but I released him as episode two of this podcast. So you can scroll back and see yeah. my original episode with him. But anyways, ended up working together. Um, and uh, long story short, you know, we've tried different things. We've tried to do stuff around crypto this last year and just the markets where they have been. There was just no pathway to fund these projects and just didn't really make a lot of sense. So we have pivoted um, back to sort of our, our bread and butter, which is mergers and acquisitions and like specifically buying and uh, growing and selling online businesses. And so what I'm working on right now with these guys is we're basically positioned as an elite accelerator for business buyers. Um, and so if, if you're out there and you want to buy an online business, uh, we're the guys to basically get in touch with. Mm. Um, We have a lot of deal flow and due diligence, uh, like proprietary tools and software and and processes and systems Mm -hmm. uh, to basically help you find the ideal business and then connect you to financing and uh, go go from there. And, uh, you know, if we can, we love to come in as equity partners as well, set you up with a growth plan and, uh, you know, take, take the business to the next level. But a lot of people think if they want to be an entrepreneur and own a business, you know, the best way to go is to start one from scratch. Mm-hmm. And actually, it's just not really the case. Buying an existing business is a great, great way to go. And there's a lot of them out there. And there's a lot of really creative, uh, advantageous ways to structure uh, deals, even if you don't have a lot of money to put down. So um, if you're interested in that, you know, talk to me. But that's uh, what we were working on in Vida Bravo, mm-hmm. basically. Um. And what else? Yeah. You sold out your teacher training coming up, yeah. your yoga teacher training. <clears throat> yeah, full up for April coming up. Today I started working on, um, so not only am I hosting teacher trainings, but I'm also taking a teacher training this year too for my 500 hour, uh, which is kind of like the next level in black yo- belt in yoga, yoga black world. Belt. <laughs> Almost. Like what's the one right below black belt? Brown. Really? Yeah. Oh. Pretty sure. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> don't quote me. <laughs> Brown belt. Actually, I think you might be right. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so it's it's that. I started working on that t- tonight. I've got like three huge bound books, like two inches thick each that I have to yeah. work through um, before the like in-person training as well as read other books and write reports and track my practice log and my teaching log, which is good, but I haven't taught in a while. (laughs) So I got to get back to teaching. I'm teaching this Friday for our four-year anniversary at Renew. There you go. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll be great. Thanks. Anyway, super proud of her for filling up that teacher training yet again. Yep. Um, And... 
Well, okay, so there is some really big news, which uh, you may have guessed from the title of this podcast. What's the title of it? <laughs> I've just decided to announce it here. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to say it? What? Oh, we're having a baby! Yeah! <laughs> Is that the title of the podcast? We're having a baby. <laughs> no, I'm just going to call it like a big announcement or something like that. Oh, but. okay, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. yeah, we're pregnant. Well, I'm pregnant for those yes. that get bothered by that fra- phrasing. <laughs> and how many weeks? I'm um, 21 weeks. Mm-hmm. So in the five-ish, five-ish month range. Yeah. Baby is as big as a banana. Or something like that today. I don't know. An in an in dive. I don't know. <laughs> they put fruits and vegetables to it, <laughs> but I barely look at the thing. And we found out that it's supposed to be a girl. Actually, it is. So I am unbelievably stoked. Yeah. Our first little successful dropout. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited? That it's a girl. I am, yeah, I'm stoked. Like, honestly, we thought it was a boy for the longest time. Yeah. Um, based off of nothing but, you know, feelings. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what we thought was intuition and old wives' tales. But um, it's a girl. It's a yeah, girl. and I, I couldn't be happier. I'm absolutely stoked. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I am nervous excited. <laughs> I am too. <laughs> I think we both are. But... It, we've been kind of slow to announce it, or rather just nonchalant with the way we <laughs> have been <laughs> announcing it. We announced it on social media a, a couple weeks back, and I told Tay, like, we we just need to get out on the podcast, too, because I know there's a lot of people that listen to us here that may not follow us on Facebook or, That's true. or Instagram. Um, but yeah. yeah, we're having a kid, and it's, uh, yeah. It's going to be so fun. I know. She's due in June. Due in June. So, June 9. June 9, yeah. yeah. So lots of updates probably around that in coming weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if honestly... If you have questions too, like... Yeah. I, well, and, we can share... Well, well, we haven't really done much so far, but... <laughs> no, but honestly, when I think about it, I am, I'm nervous and excited, but I'm nervous f- from more of the standpoint of I want our life and our career to be at a certain point before Mm -hmm. the baby comes right there's just certain benchmarks that i want to hit in terms of being a father and just being parents in general i'm actually not nervous worried about it i feel like we're going to be kick-ass parents well i think we're going to just be like where we both go with the flow really well like just in general in life and in different scenarios and even, you know, dip challenging scenarios, we're both pretty chill and just kind of go with the flow. So I don't think we'll really stress out about a whole lot in the, you know, whenever it's happening. Like I'm not, I'm not really nervous about childbirth or, you know, that whole experience. God, I would be. <laughs> I don't envy your position <laughs> at all. I mean, you're going to be there. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But, but <laughs> no, I like I'm just I'm not I'm nervous about it. It's like, okay, it's it's a natural part of life. Like animals all around the world do it every day. Like It's true. Cave men and women did cave it. Cave men and women did it back then without medication, yeah. without, you know No, you're you're gonna you're gonna like, I'm not, rock it. I am made for this. Great. That's my mantra. Yes. I am made for this. Yeah. Anyways, we're very excited, expecting parents, mm-hmm. our, our little successful dropout coming. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to be pretty cute. Yeah. Yeah, she will. She definitely will. She already has my nose. You can see it from the ultrasound. It's hanging up on the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. And it's got this uh, this cute little nose. Cute little button nose. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, so th- there's that. And I don't know. If so with, I mean, since... Finding out that we've been pregnant, we've definitely had a lot more conversations about what we want our life to look like. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what I was going to say, too. And as we a reason, had one today. Yeah, as a reason that we're not as nervous as maybe we, we would be is because we've, we've done a decent job, I think, of optimizing our life for a kid. I mean, we yeah. both work from home. 
Uh, we both work really well together just in terms of our, our relationship as husband and wife and then also as business partners. And so managing a situation like a, a newborn, you know, amongst all the other things and responsibilities we still have, I think will be. Yeah. Know, I mean, it's going to be challenging, obviously, but I think we're well, we're well prepared. Um, and then just just the fact that we can be at home full time and we have the, the freedom and autonomy yeah. in our in the work we do to be able to be there when we need to be. I definitely don't take that for granted, especially, you know, having you work from home pretty much. I mean, even more than I do, like I'm the one that has to go into town, you know, at least one or two days a week for the studio and the juice bar. Like I feel very grateful that, <clears throat> that you work from home because not a lot of, you know, women have that they have, you know, their husband's home for like a week or two after the baby's born and then they, you know, go back to work full time. Yeah. So I definitely don't take that for granted. And I know that, I mean, there's lots of women that do that and yeah, amazing. You know, I'm just telling people listening on the other end that at 28 years old, 29 years old, <laughs> geez, I'm getting so old. <laughs> 20, well, you're going to be 30 this oh, year. I'm still in my 20s. I'm still in my 20s. <laughs> I'm just telling you at 29 years old when we're about to have a kid it feels really really nice to be in the position that we're in yeah and it all comes down to me about freedom it's all about freedom right yeah. and the kind of lifestyle we've built for ourselves and so through conscious choices too very conscious choices yeah it's been a it's been a it's been a journey getting here yeah. But I just say that to encourage everybody listening um, that y you can get here too. And, and of course, um, I'm happy to talk about that anytime if you want to jump on a quick phone call or uh, email back and forth a bit. Um, you can probably find ways to contact me at SuccessfulDropout.com. Um, but happy to chat about that because I love to see other people kind of get a hold of this kind of lifestyle and, yeah. um, you know confidence as well when they're heading into new situations like <laughs> like having a kid um but yeah so there were two things that i wanted to talk about yeah and one of them you sort of alluded to mm -hmm. which is discussions we've had today as we're entering this new season of life so two of my goals this year are to master two principles uh there's Pareto's principle. So this is the uh, sort of the 80-20 rule, right? Like identifying what is the 20% of things that you do that produces 80% of the desire, your, your desired results, mm. right? And then there's Parkinson's law, which is this idea that tasks expand to fill the amount of time allotted for them. Yeah. And so basically another way of saying that is if you don't put boundaries on how much time it's going to take you to accomplish a certain task, it, it will just keep expanding. It'll, it'll just take longer than it probably should. Yeah. Right. And it's my belief now, and I've been discussing with this with some colleagues that I admire and respect, um, that, that if you can, and we've agreed that if you can master these two things, you're almost superhuman and that it really does set you a, a notch above the majority of other people, um, because you're, you're optimizing your time really, which is the only resource that you can't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for that you can't renew, you know, the yeah. only, uh, resource that is basically out of your control. It's passing. And once it's gone, it's gone. Right. right. Um, and so Pareto's principle, again, it's, it's identifying, What's the minority of the things you do that produces the majority outcome that, that you desire? So for us, we were talking about it. And what are some of the things that we ultimately desire? What are the results that we ultimately want? What was one of the things you said? Um, <laughs> well, I think just, ulti I mean, we've always just talked about like ultimate time freedom, like being able to work whenever and wherever we want yeah freedom freedom then you mentioned community yeah community right i like having a, a community to be a part of but also to lead in a sense 
Yeah. So or I, to influence. Like I say, those two things are, are crucial. Like mm-hmm. strong community and family relationships. Yeah. Like that'd be one result that, that I want in everything we do. The freedom. Freedom. Like maximum freedom in, in every area of life, right? Yeah. Freedom and autonomy. Um, what were your two? For, yeah, the other two for me to include were work that is interesting and meaningful and challenging for me. Yeah. And that in addition is high ROI. Like basically I, you know, make a lot of money for <laughs> not a ton of effort. <laughs> right. But you're enjoying what you're doing. Right. Right. Which, yeah. you know, if, if the work is interesting and challenging, then typically, you know, you can, you can find ways to enjoy it. Right. It's when yeah. work is, it's when what you're doing is not challenging you and you're not growing. That's when you get bored and stagnant and you just want to kill yourself. Right. It's, um, so, yeah. and then the, the other thing, uh, so there's, oh, the other thing for me that's important is, is to lead, it's to lead a cause mm-hmm. and, and to, um, you know, influence positively where I can, you know, that's very important to me. And so, uh, f- for us, we looked at all the things that we were doing in our life right now. And we asked, you know, what out of these things is giving us these results? Cause we, we have these results already to, to a certain extent, not to the degree that I would necessarily like, but to a certain extent, like... Or the we, degree that we'll get to eventually. Yeah, no, we're well on our way. Like, we, we have a lot of freedom, mm-hmm. you know, like, we do we do pretty good. Like, we definitely don't make as much money as I would like to yet, but, but you know, we do fine. Yeah. Um, we have strong community and family relationships. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's, in addition to successful dropout, you know, there's things that we, we lead and causes that we, um, we gather people around, right? So, yeah. so we have all these things, but looking at everything that, that takes up our time every day, right. what out of those things actually contributes to those results? What's the, the 20% of things that we do that gives us 80% of, of the results we desire? And so we sort of narrowed that down to, um, four ventures really and we're part of a lot of different things but but the four things ended up being you know what i'm involved with um you know down in mexico and you know the entity is called kingmakers and everything we're doing there Mm -hmm. um it's incredibly like exciting and challenging uh and interesting work uh that's directly in line with uh my my long-term goals uh career goals it's something i can see myself doing for for a very very long time and, um, and it, and it gives me a, a neat community of like really, uh, driven kind of entrepreneurial individuals to be a part of. There's kind of a community and culture there. So that's important. Successful dropout yeah. is obviously a huge one as far as community and a cause to sort of rally around. That was um, a big one for both of us. Cause I yeah. like this community a lot. Yeah. Um, Fulcrum was the other one. Fulcrum, yeah. So Fulcrum is this business innovation center that we're launching with our family and some others uh, in Yakima, in our city. Mm -hmm. And that's a big one. It's very early. Very early. Yeah. But but the community aspect is there. Yeah. And as as we continue to work on it, that'll just continue to grow. Um, We'll actually hopefully be able to make money from it one day. Yeah. (laughs) Those sort of things. And then the other one was? The teacher training. Yep. Yeah. And what does that give you? That gives me freedom mm-hmm. because, you know, it's a, it's, there are short amounts of time and then, you know, space in between each training that I host and um, the community aspect as well. It gives me an opportunity to lead and to speak into people's lives about something that I care about a lot and mm-hmm. then I... I want to see people succeed at. Yeah. It's lucrative too. I mean. Yeah. For your, for your time. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Which uh, I love. Yeah. And it's what's even, you know, like it's ideal, especially moving into having a kid and like, you know, this isn't going to be our only kid. We want to have a herd of children. So. <laughs> a gaggle. <laughs> a gaggle of children. <laughs> and so it's like that. That to me mo- makes the most sense in the long term to invest my time in because it it is a short you know it's it's very lucrative. Yep, I agree. So so those four things and yeah. there's other things where like there's affiliate fix and there's new you and, and renew, renew like there's a bunch yeah. of other things that we're 
were a part of. Yeah. But out of all of those things, these four ventures are what produce the the eighty percent of the desired results. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that these four ventures represent twenty percent of. No. I don't know. I like. I don't know if the math is exactly correct, but I mean, you get the <laughs> you, you get the point, right? Yeah, maybe not. I mean, you're in in what like it, with whatever you do. This this principle is it's pretty dang universal. Like when you just look at your desired results, typically it's only like twenty percent of your effort and actions that have produced those, right? So yeah. it's just a it's an exercise of constantly trying to identify what that 20% is and then just really hammer down and, and like focus in on that yeah. uh, because it's then your results will just get better and better and better, right? So That's the right. next step is for us would be to go through each one of these ventures, take successful dropout, for instance, and break that down. Like what is the 80-20 there? What are the what are the twenty what's the twenty percent oh. of what we're doing at successful dropout that's producing eighty percent of the desired results, right? I would say the podcast honestly is is one of those it's still yeah. the most popular thing at successful dropout. This is where the majority of people um listen to what's going on and get involved with the community and find us. Right. Um so I'd say that the podcast is part of that twenty percent that we do. And basically there's there's 80% of, of things that we do for successful dropout that we should probably work on discarding more, right? right. Because it doesn't produce that, that 80% of results. So hopefully that that idea is sort of sinking in <laughs> to people. So the process uh, is to do it at like a, a broader scale, just in general in life. What is the 80-20? And then within each of those things that you're doing, break that down even more. Yeah, 80-20 on a broad scale and then keep niching down right down 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 and down and 80 20 like all the way down i like that i mean it's just like it's just a it's a system for success you know right <laughs> right there it's like with goals right you just start you start at a big sort of objective broad, and then you go, big broad objective yeah. like be healthier and then you break that down into goals specific goals and right. you break that down into spe- specific action steps like right there's you know it's the whole how do you eat, eat an elephant one bite at a time sort of thing you just break things down into smaller chunks so combine those two systems eat work. one bite eat one bite at a time yeah yeah or put one step in front of the other that yeah sort of thing. i don't know that's just I a gotcha. system system right you take a big a big thing that's intimidating and just break it down into smaller i didn't chunks think you can to handle. do it in like in regards to the each individual thing though yeah, no, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to, to communicate to I'm people. <laughs> I'm just trying to communicate to people how you can how you can take two kind of universal systems that you can apply to all different situations and combine those. It's sort of like a yeah uh, alchemy sort of thing. Now we're getting nerdy, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, combine two systems and and Crazy use that magic. to you know, just keep <laughs> optimizing your life. Just optimize it more and more and more. Yeah. Right. So. Um, Pareto's okay. principle. So that's that. And then there's Parkinson's law. Yeah. Again, which that, the, the number one thing that has started to help me there is this app called Forest. And I have, uh, again, Hayden Miyamoto to thank for turning me on to, to the app in particular to be able to hone in on this skill. But the idea here is that if you sit down and you say like, okay, I'm going to write this research paper and you don't give yourself a time limit, you just say, I'm going to do it today. It could take you five hours, mm. um, you. But you would be surprised if you say if you if you set boundaries for yourself, right? And if you say I'm going to write this in one hour, so help me God, <laughs> like you're you and and stick a timer up, you know, next to your computer. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much faster you work and stay focused. And so this app, it's called Forest. It's it's an app to do that. Basically, you you bring it up and you click start. And you work in these um, periods of 25 minutes. And this is actually sort of a method. I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's a method out there that a lot of people use, I know, and it's actually very effective. Uh, 25 minutes of just pure focus on a particular uh, task. Or you could do multiple tasks. But bottom line, you're just focused. Nothing is distracting you for 25 minutes straight. After that 25 minutes is up, you take like a five to 10 minute break and go do something a little bit active. You know, I bought a soccer ball recently just, just for that. So I stand up and I'll go kick it around and kind of mess around with it in the living room 
for like five to ten minutes or I'll go play with Sif or talk to Tay or I'll walk outside. Yeah. Um, and then you come back and you do another 25 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's pretty incredible how much more productive you are as opposed to what I was doing before was just sitting down and powering through. Like I, Like if Tay doesn't pull me away and stop me, I'll work. I'll just stare at a screen for eight hours and I won't eat. Longer than eight hours. <laughs> I won't eat. I won't get up. I won't drink water. It's What was it that we were watching? Great. It was like, my work fuels me. And I was like, that is you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Vikings. The oh, show Vikings. Vikings. Yeah. Vikings on Hulu. That's another great one that you should definitely uh, watch in your free time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's true. But and you feel more productive doing that, mm-hmm. but surprisingly you're you're not. It's just it's, it's better just for focused. your brain. Yeah, yeah you ha- you're you're able to kind of I guess conserve more energy, more brain power to just just laser focus onto a particular task, and then give your brain a break, give yourself a break. You know, walk around for a bit, yeah. go get something, go get a snack, go drink something. And then come back and just laser focus for another 25 minutes. Yeah. And so this app, again, you bring up the screen, you click start, it counts you down 25 minutes. If you try to do anything else with your phone, it fails you, which is which is pretty cool. And, and what well, you do... You why, grow a tree. Right. So why it's called forest is in the 25 minutes that you set, <laughs> you, you, you grow a tree, like virtually. It starts as a little seed. And you know when you get ten minutes in, it's this little sprout. You know, and it's by the time cute. You, yeah, by the time you get to twenty five minutes, it's this full on tree, right? Tree. And then it adds to a whole you know forest that you're building. Like as you focus more, you start to build out this virtual right. forest. But what happens when you don't? When you when you mess up and you, you lose have a focus, dead tree. Yeah, your tree just dies. It's, it's just so, like a sad little so sad. stick sticking yeah. out of the ground. And then it it goes into your forest. Yeah, so you you have like <laughs> a bun- a forest of abundant trees, and then just a dead one. Yeah, here so I have like there. I have a bunch of trees now. I have a big a, a nice good forest going, and I have two dead trees. And one of them was because of me. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. We were working on something, and I asked you to look at something for me, and so you clicked oh, yeah. away. You clicked away. I just on your clicked phone. out of the app, and it was like you fail. <laughs> you killed your tree. <laughs> no. So, so that one doesn't. Count. I think the other one was I was testing it. I wanted to see what happened if you like how it failed you. I should really do this because. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to use this app. What I was doing prior to the app is I would just use a timer on my phone. Right, but yeah. the apps just made it a lot more it's fun. It's fun though, because then you get to grow trees. Yeah, and now with now that. with my team, we're we're sort of doing it competitively, right? Like just Friday, I sent them a picture of my forest. You know, <laughs> this is how I did this week. What's your forest look like? <laughs> wow, that's but, cute. <laughs> but it's great to put these boundaries on yourself, yeah. and for these tasks. You end up getting things done. I mean, because just think about it. If you ever have to write a research paper, if in the back of your mind, if you know you have all day to do this thing, you're right. going to spend all, all day. If you have to take some extra time, if you're like, okay, I should probably write a paragraph on this. So that means I need to go look up this and read more about it. Uh, that's going to take up time. If you have to get it done in like the next hour or the next 10 minutes, you're going to find a way to to get it done. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's what's what's pretty amazing is you're automatically putting these barriers in place that force your mind and, and your body to just get the work done. You just find a way to circumvent the problems and the issues because you have a yeah. you have a finish line you have to cross in time, right? Yeah. And so I like that. Yeah. That's good. So those two concepts are ones that I've been really trying to work on and I would encourage you to as well. Yeah. So the 80/20 and and Parkinson's law, and, and really focusing on giving yourself, setting boundaries for yourself, in particular with tasks that that you assign to yourself. Yeah, so that'll be good. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest questions I've been asked, honestly, since being pregnant. What is just like, how are you going to do everything that you're doing right now and have a kid? And honestly, I've asked myself that same question, but it's those two things, man. I know. Like that's it. Eighty it really twenty is. rule. That's, that's that's the big one. I think that's for all me. you need. 
is the 80 20 rule. Yeah. Making sure I'm not doing things that aren't producing the outcome that I desire or Mm -hmm. the outcome that I need. Because at the end of the day, if you, right now I'm sort of in the learning stage of these things, but I'm working my way to mastery. And if you can master these two concepts, then, excuse me, you're, then you're only ever, like, just think about this, this reality where you you have mastered these two concepts. Like you are on a day-to-day basis, you are only doing the things that produce the 80% the of the results that result. that you want, right? So you're getting like the highest uh, rate of return, the highest right. ROI on your your time and energy spent, right? Or your money or whatever. Right. And then you're also practicing uh, setting boundaries for yourself and Parkinson's law. And so whatever tasks that you do assign to yourself because they are the 80-20 you're getting those done in record time and very efficiently because you're setting those boundaries. So again, it's like those two things put together, you're, you're, you're sort of Superman in a, in a way. Right. <laughs> like, so, yeah. So yeah. And then kind of on a side from that, another thing I'm working on just for fun is my memory. And uh, there's a great book out there called <laughs> moonwalking with Einstein. If you're curious um, basically it's this memory champion that writes and he's just an average guy. All these memory champions are, there's average people that decided to work on their memory and there's these really neat, uh, systems and, and tricks and like methods that you can use to just remember an incredible amount of information for a very long time mm-hmm. and, and get it all in there in your head, you know, pretty efficiently and, and yeah. fast. Right. <laughs> and once you understand these, these methods, and these concepts, you can you, know, you can use them to remember anything from names to grocery lists. So I took some time and you uh, last house? week, yeah, I built what's called a mind palace, right. which is if you've ever watched Sherlock, is that what it's just called Sherlock yeah, with Sherlock. Benedict Cumberpatch? Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch. <laughs> Cumberbatch. Cucumberpatch. <laughs> Whatever is a funny name, anyways. You won't mind. <laughs> Uh, it's a good show, by the way. It's a great show. But yeah. he has this thing called a mind palace, and it's an actual. It's what these memory champions use, right? Yeah. So I set up a memory palace in my head and uh, started memorizing some stuff. <laughs> and so the one was a grocery list. Yeah, he like wrote it all down and had memorized it and like put it all in his mind palace. And how long ago was that? That was last week. Yeah, I still remember it. <laughs> Very vividly. And, uh, we were driving. I was driving. And he hands me this piece of paper. And he's like, okay, that's my mind palace. And it has like circles. Oh, there it is. It has circles. And it's like entryway, <laughs> piano room, living room, dining room with all these different things associated with it. He's like, okay, I'm going to do it. And he, you listed it off. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Can you tell me the list right now without? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Can't see it, right? Apples. Do you have it in front of you? Mm-hmm. Apples, bananas, water, toothpaste, toilet paper, bread, peanut butter, uh, milk, pen, sunscreen. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And how do you remember those things? Okay. <laughs> so the way I remember is I, I I'm walking through the front door into yeah. my mind palace and. This is a this is actually a place that's modeled after one of my friends' houses. But anyways, it's a it's a be, bright, like a big beautiful house. So I imagine there's these two knights on on the right and the left as you walk into this kind of big long hallway, uh, just like you'd see in a castle or something like right. that. Just a you know suit of armor. So <laughs> I walk in and there's just an apple tree like growing in the entryway and it's dropping apples on the floor. And so you walk in and you're like stepping on, apples. stepping on apples and squishing them. Yeah. Okay. So apples is the apples. first one, right? The knight on the left has a banana for <laughs> a penis. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but what else would you call it? Just in his crotch. In I don't his know. Cr- <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> look, I mean, trust me. That's in my it's seared in my brain. I'm never going to forget that. No. Yeah, I won't either right. now. <laughs> so. Apple, banana, uh, and then directly in front of me, there is a homeless man 
taking a crap, brushing his teeth <laughs> underneath a waterfall. <laughs> so, water, toothpaste, toilet paper. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's the best one. Okay, keep going. <laughs> and then, uh, to the right, again, is another knight. And he is baking bread. He's kneading the bread, specifically. And he's okay. looking at me, and he's giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> like, this is going to be a great loaf of bread. <laughs> and, then, and then I move into the left room... <laughs> I call uh, the piano room, uh, and there's a dog licking peanut butter off of the window from the outside. Okay. And so it just, it, like, it looks hilarious because you see its tongue and all that stuff. And then in the corner room, there's a bird cage, and this bird is drinking milk. And I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't know if birds can drink milk. I don't know if they like milk. I don't know if it's good for them. <laughs> and so it's just a weird thing. And then there's a fireplace, and there's a pen warming itself by the fire and i just it's just absurd like why would a pen why would a pen need to be yeah, warm i don't know i don't know but i'll never forget it <laughs> and then and then there's a piano because it's the piano room yeah. and the keys are white because of sunscreen so you try to play a piano and just sunscreen gets all over your fingers <laughs> and it's just really annoying that's good so that's how i remember it that's all. your mind palace yeah. Good job, babes. And, it, like, the palace is the method here, but... And the palace is basically just constructing this this room, and right. I built mine off a place I'm very, very familiar with. And every time you just want to memorize something, you place it creatively in the room somewhere, and you just imagine yourself walking through it. I mean, just, just try it. Um, but the principle here is that you can you can remember things, like, an infinite amount of things, and, and do it very efficiently to the extent that you can turn those things into vivid creative stories like vivid creative 3d stories in your head so just remember that like if you want to remember a name or a number or anything turn it into a vivid creative 3d story like you're watching a movie in your head Mm -hmm. and then the mind palace just anchors it it anchors it into one specific place in in your mind that you can kind of walk up to and, and look at that vivid story like this homeless man <laughs> brushing his teeth, and taking a crap at the same time <laughs> underneath the waterfall. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I so. guess it's washing away. I don't know. No, he like he's having a great time. Is when I walk happy? in, everybody's laughing. Yeah, the, okay. the dog is happy. He's eating peanut butter. The birds chirping. The night's baking bread and just giving me a thumbs up. And then you know, what about homeless... the other one? <laughs> he's just standing there. That's proud with, with the of banana. his banana peen. <laughs> 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 okay. Sorry. That's that's the end of this episode. Goodbye. <laughs>